that better? Ah, shoot, sorry. Uh, how about now? Ugh. Thankfully, this is the last time I'll ever have to do that. Obspot sponsored this showcase of their Obspot Tiny, a webcam with pan tilt zoom functionality built in that uses AI to keep you in the frame. Let's get this thing swapped out. There we go. Well, definitely looks better, but what about the tracking? Okay, tracking light went green. Hey, I'm over here, buddy. I'm over here, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, there's your box right there. So we're gonna we're gonna check you out right now. Let's start by opening this thing up. Pretty straightforward packaging. That's a really, really nice soft foam. They do not want this thing getting damaged, which is obviously a much larger concern if you've got like a, a gimbal mounted camera, right? So you can see it's got one, two axes of movement so it can track its subject around like that. It actually has, I think it's about 270 degrees. Not that you should theoretically be moving around that much. It's got a dual microphone. Well, it's hard to hold on to, you gotta be careful. It's got a dual microphone array mic, uh, non-slip thing on the bottom. And then it's actually also got a quarter inch interface so you can mount it on a little tripod on your desk or I mean really any anything else you want. Other than that, you've got Interestingly, a DC 5 volt one amp power jack and a USB-C input, which would normally provide power. You know what? That's probably so that you could use it with something like an optical USB cable, which wouldn't provide power in some kind of like machine vision application. That's something I, yeah, I wouldn't have initially thought of, but that's kind of a cool application for something like this as well. Also in the box, We've got a USB A to C cable that pff, hopefully was repackaged by our logistics guys <laughs> because I would think it doesn't come like that. <laughs> Either that or I can blame Plufu prepped this episode. Oh, okay. This appears to be some kind of weighted or magnetic mount or something. Is this, are you a magnet? You're a magnet. <laughs> and then I guess you could also use this to, oh wait. Oh, hey, there you go. All right. So the magnet part is for the base of the OBS bot. So you can quickly take it off and put it back on. This is like a um, like a grippy pad. And this would allow you to put it on top of, I don't know if I would put this on a laptop so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'd put it on a laptop so much, but definitely on a desktop monitor. I would expect that to sit pretty, pretty well. Let's here, Andy, you, uh, you, you got the camera behind me, right? Let's throw it on a, a desktop monitor, I think is more reasonable. There you go, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's more, <laughs> that, that's more like it. All right, let's put it on the stand idea that Andy came up with though, and let's give the motion tracking a try. Let's just go ahead and plug in our type C cable. And this it's power and data, because it's a copper cable, you get this little startup animation and then boom, it's on. So let's open up the software and tell it tap lock. Now, it should start tracking my face once it's detected that there is a face. Hey, Obspot, how you doing? So one of the main applications of something like this is not that you are too incompetent to point your webcam at your face, like I kind of implied at the beginning of the video. The main application is if you're someone who might have a tendency to lean as you talk or someone who kind of <clears throat> likes to shift in their chair and get more comfortable and making it so that whoever you're talking to is always able to see your face, always centered in the frame. Uh, one of the other applications that Obsbot has talked about is if you're someone like a Twitch streamer, for example, if you were to crop your camera into just a little square, that's like right down in the bottom of the frame of the game you're playing, then any small movement could start, you know, cutting off the side of your head, for example. Whereas with this, it can track you if you move and make sure that you're always in the correct part of the frame. So that's, that's actually pretty darn cool. It's got a few different modes, so we can try that out. It's also pretty good for teaching. Yeah, if you're if you're a lecturer who needs to kind of walk back and forth across a whiteboard and point at different stuff, this would absolutely be an excellent way to handle that. I mean, we can even try. Why don't I? Why don't I just stand up first? Oh, were you were you ready for that? <laughs> okay, well here I'm not gonna stand up just yet, but let's just kind of slide over here, 
and uh, uh, yeah. All right, I'll give you guys a little geography lesson here. All right, so this right here is where Linus Media Group is. So this is the center of the known universe, right there. Oh, that's pretty responsive. So the thing that this reminds me of most so far is actually Center Stage, which is a new feature from Apple that, well, basically does this, except it's actually using digital zoom. So it's zooming in and then moving around the, kind of doing a digital pan in order to track you. Whereas this, you're actually keeping the full image quality of the camera no matter where you move. And so that's up to 1080p, 30fps, 720p, 60fps. Uh, there's a few different modes though. So tap on lock seems to make it not track you. Tap lock seems to make it track you. Hello? Yep, okay, cool. You can digitally zoom it. How granular is the control? Okay, cool. And more importantly, there's a few different modes. So standard mode, then there's headroom mode. Headroom mode is more designed for tall users if they want more tight framing to make sure that their head won't constantly be cut off by the, the edge of the frame. And then they've got motion mode, which is more designed for like uh, really dynamic presentations where you, you wanna always be in the frame. So if I would, oh yeah, so it tracks you way faster. So if you were someone like a, a fitness instructor and you're like, yeah, now we're moving over here. Yeah, now we're moving over here. Yeah, now we're moving over here. It's like, hey, oh, I can't, I'm gonna keep up with this guy. Now we're gonna, we're gonna stand up here. Hey, we're, we're doing the shaking dance, the shaking bacon dance. I'm gonna head over here. Hey, Obspot, what's up? All right, cool. Oh, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Now I'm just curious. Let's see if it can follow me if I manage to get out of the frame. Okay, I'm going over here. Ugh. What is that? Feels like playing peekaboo with like a baby. I'm here. It's like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Hey, I'm over here. Hey, you got him. <laughs> okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, interesting. So you can switch between multiple devices. Yeah, like I said, okay, they're apparently planning ahead for this being used in machine vision applications. So they expect you to have multiple devices. So within the software, you can switch between them, zoom it in and out with uh, software hotkeys, uh, put it into preset positions. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then you can actually put it to sleep. So you can either uh, press sleep or you can do this and that will actually put it into sleep mode. And then the gimbal is just right here. So you can reset it, and then you actually just have like a little controller do data magic. Whoop, boop, 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 boop. And then. You can have like multiple of this. You can do like multi-cam, like live stream. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You could do, you could do like a multi-cam live stream type thing. The video quality is like, it's fine. It's, it's a webcam. Like you shouldn't have unrealistic expectations, but it's fine. I would like a way to have more granular control over things like the auto exposure. It's very aggressive. It's all about making sure it's capturing what it's seeing versus making sure that the colors are pleasing to the eye, you know? So my skin in particular ends up looking quite washed out sometimes as it sort of quickly adjusts to different lighting situations. Yeah, this is a very challenging lighting setup to be very clear, guys. Yeah, like we, I'm, I'm backlit by studio lighting right now. Now there's a couple gestures. You can put your hand up to start auto tracking, or you can go like this apparently for 2x digital zoom. Oh, interesting. Oh, so now zoom. Hey, 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 there we go. And that's pretty much it. It does cost $200, but considering the price of pan tilt zoom cameras in general and webcams as well, it's honestly not totally unreasonable. Uh, oh, actually, there's one last thing. Andy, they boast about their low light uh, image quality. So do you want to just like kill this light in front of me and let's just, sure. let's just see. I'll let you guys be the judge. So we're going to be, this is a very challenging scenario where I'm backlit and we turn off the studio lighting, but let's see how it handles it. All right, Obsbot, show me what you've got. And I'll turn off the, the light. Yep, it's a webcam, all right. But with pan tilt zoom. So guys, if you need something a little like this, we're gonna have it linked down in the video description. Thanks again to Obsbot for sponsoring this video and to you guys for watching it.